Hey, what's up guys? I'm Evan. Today I'm going to be talking really quickly about native permissions in Expo. So certain functionality is considered sensitive or intrusive, and this functionality is guarded by a permission. Now, a permission is pretty complex in the native API, but luckily the React Native in Expo API is a very simple interface for it. So right here I have an example snack set up. Link will be in the description. All we have going on here is a basic view, and then we have some text with an on press handler, and then the status of a permission. Now the permission we're gonna be looking at today is the contacts permission. This applies to every permission. I think it's a little different for notifications, but not too different. So when we press this text, we're gonna be calling this function which will start our permission flow. If you want to use permissions, all you need to do is import permissions from Expo, uh, and then there's two functions in the permissions module. Those are get async and ask async. And ask async basically does everything that get async does, except it pops a modal. And then you can see we're using a, a constant, the contacts constant, to decide which permission we wanna ask for. Down here, I have a list of every permission. Uh, you know, things like camera, location, notifications, uh, just a ton of stuff. Now, some of these only apply to Android. I uh, was too lazy to actually list which ones, but you can find them in the docs, uh, which link will be in the description. Now, ask async and get async will both evaluate to the same value, which is a promise that has this status value deconstructed out of it. So this value status can evaluate to granted, undetermined, or denied. Uh, undetermined means that the user has not been prompted yet, Granted means that they've been prompted and they've accepted the permission. And denied means that they have, well, I think you get it. They've denied the permission. Now, it's important to know that when you call ask async, your user will only see the permission one time. This is a, a system thing. Uh, this isn't like a React Native thing, for instance. Once they've either granted or denied the permission, you won't be seeing that again, and then ask async will function uh, exactly like get async. So let's take a look at the flow here. We got status, and if I were to come over here and press on this button, so this is an example of what you'll see in your permissions bubble. Now we can go ahead here and allow or deny. Now if we allow, then we can continue to get information. Status will evaluate as granted. Uh, and let's go ahead and try that real quick. We'll hit allow, and you can see status is now granted. We've set it here so it's updated the UI. And then we read some contact information. If I open up the little console, you see here's my little brother and all of his personal information. Lots of fun. But now we have access to all the contact information. If we were to reload this app, it'll come back with granted. Go ahead and reload that. And if you see now when I push it, it immediately goes to granted and pulls the data again. Okay, so say your user denies your permissions, but you still need it for the application. You can create a gate which basically says uh, you can't use this feature until we have permission. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing right here when we say status is not equal to granted. Then we can use the React Native linking API to open the, the settings app on your phone and it will take you to the app so that you can change the permission. Now, of course, you might want to preface it with like an alert saying, hey, could you please toggle this permission on? Uh, something like that. But we call app-settings with the colon at the end, and it will take us right to that permission. I really enjoy this functionality. And then you'll notice that it, it breaks us out of here. So we're going to go ahead and go to the settings manually because we've already accepted the permission. So this is the screen that this linking command will open. And if I were to go over here and toggle this contacts uh, setting, now the contacts setting is denied. You notice that it says device disconnected. And that is because on Android and on iOS, whenever you change a native permission, the app will automatically reset. Now, this is actually pretty convenient because this means that we don't need to check the app state and then see if our users changed it in settings. Everything just starts from scratch when you change these. So I can go back over here and open the Expo app. You see it's already reset. That's the device resetting the application. I can go ahead and open this. And now if I hit this button, it's gonna say denied and it will take us back here to the linking screen, which of course we can then go ahead and accept. Go back, you'll notice it's reset again. Open back our application and we can grant it. The last thing I want to talk about is changing the message on iOS. Now this is very important. If you were to build a standalone application and upload to the App Store, uh, you need to explain exactly why you're using the permission. Otherwise, Apple could reject your application. And to do this, you would go into your app.json. And here I've got kind of a 
kind of a pseudo app.json just because I was too lazy to make the file. But imagine this was the app.json right here. You're going to have the expo field, the iOS field, and then the info plist field. In this info plist field right here, we can go ahead and add any kind of value that you might find in your app's native info.plist. And if we were to add the key and the value here, then it will go ahead and compile those when you create your standalone build into the application. Uh, I have an example here of all the expo default values. Uh, I went and pulled these from the expo app. You see we have calendar usage description, uh, just all of these. Uh, again, the link to the snack will be in the description if you want to take a closer look at it. Uh, but for instance, allow Expo experiences to access your contacts. You could change this to whatever value you want. And then when you build it for the app store, it will show up in that bubble. And that will help prevent your app from getting rejected. So I definitely recommend you do that. Uh, you don't need to do this on Android because the Play Store is a lot more lenient, uh, which is cool. All right, guys, that's it for the permissions module. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, and I will see you in the next video.